What up, everybody? Welcome, welcome back, welcome back. Hey, everybody, let me get into my spot. All right, this is Plan Your Greatness, and I am your gracious host, Carlton Hamilton. This is volume three of the Raise, or How Do You Raise the 5% of Your Sales Force, or just 5% of your company. Again, the 80 20 rule applies where 20 percent oh, of your workforce is generating 80 percent of your productivity and that's typically from the high end so once you start breaking down them sections as far as where that 20 percent is coming from break it down once you get down to that bottom five percent they're literally giving you nothing and so companies are always trying to figure out and, and i and i i got these books because i want to real quick okay good reads okay right here Think and grow, grow Rich, Good Read. Okay, put that over there on the side. Okay, The Power of Positive, think, the power of positive Thinking, Great Read. Okay, uh, what is this? The One Minute Manager Builds Promising Teams by Kim Blanchard. Okay, Good Read. Okay, Gung Ho, Good Story. Kim Blanchard, Sheldon Bowles, Good Read. Okay, uh, Managing in a Changing Time, you know, uh, Peter Drucker. All right, we're going to get through with this and we're going to get through this video real quickly. Jack Welch. All right. Pretty good read. And of course, most people are not aware of is that the law, the, the law of success is actually the full blown 30 year research of what Napoleon Hill did. Think and Grow Rich are the notes from this book. So if you really want to dig into what it means as far as, you know, finding out what people are really, really about, you want to read this. This is where that 19 out of 20 percent came from. And it's, it's right around in that 95 to 100% as far as the people that are actually doing the things that they say they're going to do. I honestly believe in my research that it's like 2%. 2% of the people are actually killing it as far as doing what they, they say they were going to do. Now, this individual, Jack Welch, I don't have a book on Herb Kelleher. Jack Welch was the CEO of, what was it, GE. And Herb Kelleher was the CEO of Southwest Airlines. These two completely turn these companies around with a lot of the very same principles that I apply. You know, I, I bring the street, the street into it as far as what I meant for my family, sports, the streets, prison, uh, depression, homelessness, uh, cop, everything. I bring all that. These guys are coming maybe from a different perspective, but it's some really good stuff as far as how they dealt with the bottom 5%. This is where a lot of the principles I came and then I brought all my other stuff into it as well. But I want to bring that just giving you some ideas as far as some of the things that I use as tools of reading. But here we are. Volume three. How do you raise the five percent of your company? Now, where, where's right here? Hold on. Hold on. Ugh, let me get this. Sorry about that. All right. We went through volume one. This lays the foundation as far as who are you working with? All right. Number two is. You get, your, you get your team to ask themselves the three questions. What do you want? Why do you want it? And then can you see it in your mind? Now, once you get them to, to create those questions and follow them along and, you know, put that in place, you need a support system, okay? Every person needs a support system. And what I'm finding out with this bottom 5%, they are all over the map. They don't know why they're there. They don't have any sort of motivation. They've not asked themselves the three questions, so they don't have anything, you know, that you can sit on top of it. What I created, and this is in my book, and that these are called the nine pillars of wisdom. Now, here's what's amazing. I use all I use all nine of these, but these have come over years. OK, so I'm not asking you to take all nine of them and apply them. What I'm saying is take one. OK, take one and apply it for 24 hours. That's it. So I'm going to go through these nine. And what you do is you pick the ones and this is what you'll do with your team. You will tell them, pick one of these and apply it for 24 hours, get some feedback. And then now you're going to move on to the next thing. All right. Number one is show up. And I've talked about this before. Woody Allen said 80 percent of success is showing up. But showing up is do this for 24 hours. Show up. Show up on here. Here's how it works. You show up like Woody Allen said, you get 80% of the opportunities. You show up on time, you get 85% of the opportunities. You show up on time with a plan, you get 90% of the opportunities. You show up on time with a plan and a mindset to implement that plan, 
you'll get 95% of the opposition. So if you show up, you show up on time, you show up on time with a plan, you show up on time with a, with a plan, with an idea to implement that plan, and then you implement that plan in the spirit of excellence, you get all the opportunities. But first, you got to show up. Okay, that's number one. Number two is stop lying to yourself. When I was homeless, when I was out there being depressed and I was in the streets, you know, uh, couch surfing, just, you know, befriending women just to get a place to stay and all that stuff like that. When I was doing that, I was lying to myself because then I would say, man, all I need is a good night's sleep, a hot meal, some hot sex. And man, I was, I was, I was, I'd be on my way lying to yourself. All right. The other one is I heard this, this story. This guy was interviewing Harriet Tubman and he asked him, Mrs. Tubman, how do you feel about the fact that you uh, is you is allegedly said that you freed almost a thousand slaves? How do you feel about that? And she looked at me. And I, I could just imagine in her voice like this. She said, you know what? I'd have freed a thousand more had they known they were slaves. Stop lying to yourself. All right. Them slaves are lying to themselves. All right. Number number three is every goal has a deadline. So everything that you that you do for the next 24 hours, each one of these, just remember for the next 24 hours, whatever that you said you say you're going to do, give it a deadline. Because Dr. Dennis, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough says what gets measured gets done. So for the next 24 hours, show up for the next 24 hours, either stop lying to don't tell any lies. Number three is whatever it is that you're doing in that next 24 hours, set a goal and then Give it a deadline and hit it and make sure that you hit it for the next 24 hours. All right. For the next 24 hours, don't make any excuses. They're just unacceptable. No excuses whatsoever. All right. Number five. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Number five is master your gifts. And what I mean by master your gifts is for the next 24 hours, if you so choose this one, what you want to do is do something in the area of personal development for the next 24 hours. Read something, watch a video, do something, attend a class, a workshop, something that is that is building you up in personal development. Jim Rome said that if you work on your job, you know, trying to be the best at your job, you're going to make a living. But if you work on trying to make yourself to be the best on that job, you'll make a fortune because you're now investing in, in yourself. All right. Number six is no plan B. Nothing can resist the will which will stake its very existence on its fulfillment. So what you do is whatever goal that you set for that what for the next 24 hours, don't allow any extract, any um, distractions, any negative thoughts or anything to get in the way. Focus on that plan. Do not have a plan B you because you want to focus on it. You want to be running toward a goal as opposed to looking over your shoulder like you're being chased by a pit bull. All right. Number seven is trust your mind's eye. There's a little story that this little kid is in this classroom. Teachers is telling the class, hey, for the next 10 minutes, um, you guys get you've been great today. You guys can draw, color, draw and everything for the last 10 minutes of the day. So the kids start breaking out their markers and everything. Teachers walking around the class. All of a sudden she sees little Jamari. And he's drawing, but he's got his arm covered like this, so she can't see what he's drawing. So she goes, Jamari, what are you drawing? Jamari lifts his head up a little bit and says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And so he gets back drawing, and so she looks puzzled, and she goes, sweetie, nobody knows what God looks like. And, and be just barely lifting his head up. They will in a minute. And so the understanding with that is for the next 24 hours, trust your mind's eye. Do not allow anybody to distract you from what you see. When you have that what in your mind and whatever that vision is that you are creating in your imagination, do not allow negative thoughts. Do not allow negative voices. Do not allow anybody to take away from that mindset that you have. All right. Number eight is don't be afraid to fail. I challenge you to go take a cooking class. Go Go down. If you don't play any basketball, go down to the local um, L.A. fitness and get on that basketball court. Make sure you stretch. I don't want you pulling on hamstring and then coming back belly aching on my in my mentions. Like, Man, I pulled a hamstring. Go down there, play some basketball. Go somewhere at tennis court. Do something that takes you out of your comfort zone. Go try a new food. Don't be afraid to fail. Try something new. 
I preferably do it in the area of personal development. Try something. Do something. Okay? But do something that you have not done before. All right? Don't be afraid to fail. Now, the last thing is master the day the night before. What I mean by that is go look at a video. Go read something on meditation. Okay? And it doesn't have to be something elaborate. Something that you can do in five or ten minutes before you go to bed. I do a light meditation and basically what I do is I do what I call as a mind cleanse. And it doesn't take anything about five or ten minutes where I actually clear my mind and I just kind of make sure that I'm planning my day. Because I honestly believe that that time that you're asleep, that's a, that's a, that's a very sacred time to where I think you're close to whatever the creator is or whatever you believe, whether you believe it's yourself, whether you believe it's the sun, whether you believe it's God, whatever you believe is the, the creative source. I believe that's where you are the closest and you're having a conversation. And if you're going to talk to somebody, are you going to sit there and get to the conversation and start bitching and moaning something? No, you're not going to do that. You want to take positivity in that conversation. Positive positivity. Positivity. All right. Show up, stop lying, every goal, set a deadline, no excuses, master your gifts, no plan B, trust your mind's eye, don't be afraid to fail, master the night, uh, master the day the night before. Take one of those nine, apply it over the next 24 hours, and when you do that, you will be planning your greatness. This is Plan Your Greatness, and I will say this again, plan your greatness. You know why? Because no one else will. All right, I'll see you all next time.